you know, usually when I do podcasts, I just do audio and I supplement it with like literally anything else uh, in the background when I actually make a video. But I said, you know what? This year, I've made podcasts previously, but this year I really want to use this as an avenue for just kind of like live journaling and just kind of shooting the shit with myself and hopefully occasionally a guest or two. But I have kind of, and if you guys are wondering why it's called Whatever Forever, welcome to the first episode, by the way. No proper introduction or anything like that, but kind of for the vast majority of my 20s i want to say and even into my teenage years i've kind of been living by this sort of vibe that is just summed up by those two words whatever forever and the reason and if you guys are wondering it's not it, this name is not even original at all <laughs> the name is like literally not original there is a band called modern baseball that has a song where kind of like the climax of the song the line that they say is whatever forever and it's a really i i fucking love that song modern baseball that uh that band is amazing i'm really sad that they're on hiatus but it's one of those things that during that era it was when I was out of high school, I had no intention of going to college. I was pressured, obviously, by my parents to, especially my dad, to really look into going to college. But I just didn't know what I wanted to do, to be honest. I mean, I was out of high school. I was a fucking teenager. What was I supposed to do, you know? And I fucking hate, like, I don't I don't know. I, maybe I'll get into later, but I kind of fucking hate when people have this, like, live set up for them already <laughs> because it just it's just it's just so fucking easy you know it looks so fucking easy but for me again and this is not just original to me again my life is not original at all but um it's one of those things that i feel like i just felt lost right i was technically already 18 and i was already at the point in my life where legally i could do whatever the fuck i want right if my parents didn't want me to go somewhere I could say fuck you and just go. You know what I I you know what I mean, but I just couldn't. Obviously, I couldn't. I live in a Hispanic household and if, for those of you guys who live in Hispanic households, you know that it's a little bit difficult to let go of family and to kind of stray from the path, I guess. And even if you do, it sometimes it's not really looked well upon. It's not really something that at times I feel like is really encouraged, right? But Again, whatever forever comes from that uh, modern baseball song. I'll look it up at some point. Maybe I'll do it for episode two. But the vibe of this podcast is, again, it's just going to be another bro who thinks he could do another podcast. <laughs> it's going to be a thing in the scope of podcasts where it's just going to be another one in the ether. But hopefully it isn't. Hopefully it's one of those things where it allows me to, because I've been thinking about 2024 a lot and moving forward. And one of the things that I, don't do a really good job at of is making sure that I kind of voice what I have going on here, right? When I'm thinking about something, what I, when I'm feeling something, I'm very much the person that bottles things up, right? And I feel like a lot of people could relate to that, you know? And I think it's not only just because of my personality, but also because of my... I feel like the guy mentality, the man mentality. I'm a man. I don't want to be vulnerable, right? But I've, especially in my 20s, I've been trying my hardest to grow out of that. And I definitely feel like I'm doing a good job of, of it. But there's still moments where I want to be the, I guess, the rock, right? And um, I'm married. So I'm 27. I am going to be turning 28 in 2024. And I hate it. Honestly, I hate it. Just the the concept of growing up to me is something that it's not that I'm scared of it, but it's one of those things where I feel like it it does make me a little anxious. It does make me a little nervous, I guess. Right. But it doesn't like petrify me. It's not something that I'm constantly thinking about. Right. It's just one of those things where, you know, for example, my wife jokes about it, even though we're only six months apart. She's like, damn, dude, you're 20, you're turning 28 this year. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it, it, I am going to be turning 28 and it's fucking wild. And it's, and it's at moments, it is scary. I will admit, I'm not going to lie. It is at moments. It does feel scary because to be honest with you, like 
and I, I guess I could just talk talk about it here. And I kind of want to give you guys an introduction to me so that you guys, you know, kind of, you know, if you guys want to, you know, relate, I, I know people like relating, you know, as much as some people don't, you know, have that common courtesy to find some, some something to, you know, relate to. I think it's important to establish a foundation. And I hope that with this episode, this first episode of wherever, whatever forever, that I could establish that connection and at least, you know, let your guard down when you're consuming something new. I know that for sure when I try to consume something new, it is a little bit difficult. You know, I don't listen to a whole lot of new music because my personality is one that I like to feel that comfort. I like to feel that, you know, I already know what's to, I already know what's going to happen. Right. And I like knowing that. I like being in that comfort zone and for me to find something new that really connects with me, it really connects with me. So I hope that this could be it. And again, I want to go back to just dive more into that, dive into the whole bottle, bottling things up and why it took me into my damn near into my twenties to really start to upset myself and really start to, you know, be okay, be in touch with my feelings and even diving into things such as my sexuality, right? I mentioned previously that I was born into a Hispanic household. I was born in Mexico, actually. And I say that, and to be honest, I didn't really live a long time. I didn't, I mean, I did, sort of. I moved to the United States when I was uh, going into first grade, which is what, like seven years old, six years old-ish? I'm not really sure, I don't really remember, but it's around that time frame. And I grew up in Mexico. I grew up with uh, my pa- both my parents. I grew up with two sisters, you know, and I'm the middle child, right? I'm the middle child and I am the only son. Yeah, I'm the only boy. I'm the only man in my family, right? And so I feel like, and maybe, you know, maybe, and this is just my conclusion, uh, just thinking about it throughout, you know, later into my teenage years, especially now in my 20s where I think about it a little bit more. And I think that my dad more than my mom had this idea of what they wanted me to be and what they want what they thought my life was going to be would look like essentially, because my dad grew up in a household where my grandpa may he rest in peace was just through obviously through stories that I've heard of him was that he was a very strict and no bullshit sort of person, kind of a little bit cold at times, you know, and I feel and just through the few very few times that I've been very vulnerable with my dad, he never really wanted to be like that. Right. But you got to keep in mind that he spent the majority of his life with him, right? Growing up with him, you know, doing whatever he was. And my grandpa, not to, I didn't mention it, but he was also part of the political parties in uh, Mexico, right? And so he very much had a stern outlook on life, a very direct, a very, I guess, political way of doing things, right? And so my dad had to grow up with that. And I do respect my dad. I do really admire my dad for not wanting to live up to that. But even still, he still grew up in a time frame and in an era where you very much, your ideals are very much passed on by your parents, right? The people who raised you, your surroundings and whatnot. And while he is very much, I feel like, more accepting than my grandpa would potentially have ever been, he still has his way of thinking of how things should be done. Very traditional, very, and again, it's very rooted in the Hispanic household sort of thing. And for him, and I think my mom as well for a bit, was that if you don't go to school, if you don't pursue a traditional career when you're, you know, out of school or whatever, you you have your college set up for you, then you are just going to fail in life. There was no other way for you to succeed by besides going to school, getting a traditional career and getting something that is going to guarantee you a certain amount of money at the end of the month or at the end of the year. Right. And, you know, obviously have a couple kids here and there and just do things very traditional, buy yourself a house, do that, save up for blah, 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 your, your future family. Right. But you notice that in everything that I mentioned, you don't really do things for yourself, 
right? You're always doing things for your future children, your future house, your future spouse, your future partner. You never, in all those things that I mentioned, you never really start to worry about what 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 about me? <laughs> why don't why am I not doing things for myself, right? And as I was growing up, uh, I very much lived by his I- ideologies, right? And what I mean by that was, I never really you you notice that my hair is a little bit longer. I will up the upload this in the audio form. So I for those of you guys for those of you guys who are just listening, I uh, I have colored hair i have like teal hair and i have tattoos i have my ears pierced i have a nose piercing i have a fucking mullet and we'll get into the mullet i know some people don't are fans of the of mullet but i'll get into it but that's not that that wasn't all of this that you could potentially see in all the things that i mentioned came from just a couple of years ago right it wasn't even things that i was allowed to do growing up Growing up, again, I grew up in Mexico, and but once I came to the United States, even still that applied, My, I was never really allowed to have long hair. I was never really allowed to decide what kind of haircut I would want. I never really got the opportunity to grow my hair or do anything like that. God forbid I even mentioned trying to dye my hair, right? That Again, that the concept of that was not even like a thing until like damn near almost my 20s, right? And so it was something that, I kind of grew up with, but then as soon as I started to, the frontal lobe started to develop, um, I wanted to do things on my own. I started to listen to music that wasn't what my parents were playing in the car whenever we would go on trips or whenever they would take me to school. I, you know, I got an iPod, I got an MP4 player before I did get an iPod. I never really had an iPod. I don't know why the fuck I just lied. <laughs> Can you tell I'm nervous on this first episode? But I had an MP4 player and even still I remember I would I would load in the songs that I would hear from my mom, hear from my dad, hear on the radio and it wasn't until one of my cousins from Utah came came down to visit that I was introduced to bands in the hardcore heavy metal, you know, just things of that nature and that like literally was me the the eye-opening moment that like holy fuck, there's like a completely new world that I have not been introduced to because I've been kind of living in the ways of somebody else, essentially, right? And I can't really blame myself for that. It's just one of those things where that's the setting that I was put in, that was the environment that I was put into. And so I was just influenced by that. And so as I got into high school, even a little bit before high school, actually, I think it was like seventh, eighth grade, I you know, started listening to different types of music. I started to want to dress a little longer, a little uh, different. I wanted to grow my hair out and, you know, have it longer. And this played into my scene and, you know, the clique that I was put into when I was in high school. I was very much into the scene kids. I know kind of cringe, but I was a scene kid back then. I was listening to Axine Alexandria. I was listening to Sleeping With Sirens, Pierce the Veil, all that kind of shit. Suicide Silence eventually, when Suicide Silence was like the heaviest band that I've ever listened to, right? But I was very much in that scene. And even still... Even still, when it was clear that I was expressing myself, learning about myself, learning the types of clothes that I wanted to wear and the types of music that I would listen to, my dad still felt as if he needed to still enforce those ways. He didn't like it. You know, he didn't like it at all. I remember for the longest time, for a, year, for a couple of years, I had grown my hair out right and i again if you guys are watching this this is probably the longest i've ever had you know of course it's a mullet sort of vibe but i had it pretty close to that uh it's even just the top like i cut it i style it now but back then i was just letting it all grow out right and so my hair i had the bangs you know kind of like this kind of longer to be honest uh obviously the sides were longer as well i didn't really want to do anything with like a fade or anything like that and again that was one of those other things that I was just expressing myself and I didn't want to cut my hair because my hair was part of my identity. And at some point I did actually say, fuck it, I'm going to cut my hair shorter. And I remember that was literally, I've never seen my dad happier than that day when I actually decided, you know what, I'm just going to cut my hair shorter. And it wasn't even because of my dad. It was because I wanted to try something different. And 
again it was like the happiest day in his life when i actually cut my hair short after having having it long for such a long time right but again it was just me trying to express myself and i felt like even then i couldn't i didn't really had the opportunity to do so because i would feel as if i was a judge i didn't want to bother being made fun of or even at times i feel like get in trouble right i would get in trouble for wanting to be the person that i wanted to be and express myself how i wanted to express myself and i never did anything dumb i never did anything like extremely crazy right i think if i'm being completely honest to, to, with you the craziest thing that i had ever done was i i got my ears pierced right and i didn't even get like permission from it normally obviously i would have to bring that up but i think especially with my dad and more so my dad my mom is a little bit more relaxed you know she kind of like shakes her head and you know says oh my god like what are you doing essentially but then she gets over it my dad like holds it very very like personal like honestly like i remember when i got my first tattoo i didn't show my dad i got it in a place where my dad could not see it i have this tattoo right here it's kind of like a weird like i say kind of weird some people don't know what it is you know but it's like a rose with the destiny ghost show on it and uh, I know to those of you guys who are listening, you guys probably do not, you know, you can't visualize it, but trust me, it's there. And I remember we went on a family trip to Cancun one year and my shirt was like, my sleeve was like up more than it usually is. And my dad saw it and he was like, he couldn't believe it, right? He couldn't believe it. And then I have like almost a full <laughs> half sleeve of tattoos now because I fucking love getting tattooed. But again, it's the, one of those things where, I had to do with unnoticed, right? I, I didn't tell anybody. I got one ear pierced uh, first when I was at a sleepover with my cousin, and he didn't even do it with the needle. He did it with a pierced, with a piercing, with the actual like earring, and it's like, it's not even like sharp that end. It's just like straight up, like not not sharp at all. And he still managed to put a, a hole in my ear. The other ear, I got it at school <laughs> again, not even with the needle with another piercing that I just kept in and uh, like somehow some way, even if it was done at this at different moments by different people, they're they're pretty even bro. Like, honestly, they're pretty fucking even. But again, it was one of those things that I just had to do. And you know, me, I'd rather uh ask for forgiveness then ask for permission kind of vibe you know what i mean <laughs> i find it easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission um and nowadays you know and before anybody thinks like wow like you really live like that i, I don't nowadays nowadays i live very much to my own standards and to by my own rules and i really like it right because again i i feel like especially now more than ever I feel very, very comfortable with myself, right? And for a, for a long time, I felt like I just didn't really, you know, I would see something. For example, one of the biggest things like forever was I would see, you know, some celebrities, some skaters, and especially with the music that I would listen to, some artists that would paint their nails. And I always thought it was cool as fuck to have my nails painted black, but I never did it. I never really fucking did it because again, I would be judged. I would be ridiculed. And especially I feel like if I were to have my paint nails painted, even with the friend group that I would have, I feel like I would be made fun of. I couldn't, I can't imagine myself going to fucking high school with painted nails and not being bullied by fucking assholes, right? Obviously my friend group, I feel like wouldn't really care because we were all seen kids. We we're all in the emo phase. So we were all listening to that type of music and kind of dressed a similar way. And that was very much like the cool thing to do. But still, I would feel like I would be extremely bullied if I went into high school with my nails painted so I never really did it because I had a fear of that out of fear of that and even still even still just because I listened to different types of music and even because I dressed a little bit different than the uh the preppy kids the jocks and just from anybody else the scene kids were very much the outliers of you know every other click um, I would still get bullied and called every single name in the book, right? So I didn't want to add something on top of that. If I could avoid it, then I definitely did. And again, it wasn't until I moved out that and I got married that I really was able to express myself and be really who I am today, right? Who I really want to be and how I really want to express myself. 
I was married. I got married at a pretty young age. I had just literally a month before turned 20. I got married in December. I, my birthday's in November. So literally not even a month, days after I got, I turned uh, 20, I got married. And, um, some people might say, yo, that's fucking young. Like, what are you doing getting married at 20 right as you turn 20? But honestly, it was, and I always say this, but it was literally the best decision I could have had ever made because I was getting married to the person, to the best person that I could have, have ever met, right? To the best person ever, my wife. And I owe a lot to her. I owe a ton to her because never in my life have I been in a situation where someone just so just really really loved seeing me happy right just l unapologetically loved seeing me happy and wanted me to just be able to express myself didn't judge me whatsoever did not say oh well maybe you should reconsider that never has she ever done that she has only made me love myself more than ever right some people think that when you get married you have to stop kind of worrying about yourself because you're you know in a relationship with this other person but it has never felt like that with her and it's always felt like she just wants me to be, be the best person that i could be so that i could be happy right and being with her has legitimately changed my life so fucking much and for the better and i owe a lot to her and i and i tell her this and i'm I'm very open about how much i love my wife and how much she has impacted and changed my life but it's it's something that i am so grateful for her to be honest because she literally changed the trajectory of my life and if it wasn't for her i feel like things would be extremely different for me like I know people say, I don't know what I would do without you. I don't know what I would have done if I wouldn't have met you. But legitimately, I have no idea where I would be in life if it wasn't for her. I have no idea how I would look like or who I would be if it wasn't for her. Because I feel like she gives me the motivation to really try harder and to really stick to my guns and to really just put myself first. And that's another thing as well is that I feel like a lot of relationships fail because their partner, the partner that you're with feels as if they're the priority. You are second. And it sounds very sad, but there is a lot of relationships where what I had mentioned previously, where you have to put, you have to put yourself up to the side because there's this other person involved in my relationship. I feel like I'm allowed to not even allowed i'm encouraged to think about myself and to really analyze what it is that i want right and it wasn't again in my 20s right i've been with my wife for the better part of um well i'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn we're gonna turn four years married this year which is kind of nuts but it's one of those things that you know, we, we really, really cherish each other. We really, really cherish each other. Um, not four years. What the fuck am I talking? My wife's going to watch this. She's going to be super, super mad. <laughs> not, four, not four years. Um, eight years. Sorry. Eight years. And it, to me, it's just one of those things where we are just, I, 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 I damn near almost cry thinking about her because she has legitimately changed my life so so fucking much and i could have not been able to do the things that i have done without her and especially have what i have without her to be honest with you let me think about it because honestly now i want to get this number right I, I i feel like i'm nervous and i'm letting the nerves get to me but let's see i got married at the end of 2016 um and i remember that because the next year i moved to la obviously and so 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and this year we will turn eight years. Yes. So I got it right. I got it fucking right. Wife, my wife, I love you. I got, I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. You know, I was getting confused because even though we don't celebrate the anniversary of when we became boyfriend and girlfriend, when we actually like 
uh, got together in a relationship that I still think about that. So I had both of those numbers um, in my head. And the reason why I said three earlier, I'm trying to I'm trying to save my ass. But the reason I said three earlier, because I, um, that was how many years we were together before we actually got married. Um, but yes, she inspires me to do so so much for myself and again i st i dyed my hair the first time i love dyeing my hair by the way um i've had i i recently had my hair black my natural hair color for the longest time and i was like so frustrated and the only reason i did that was because i started a new job but i feel comfortable they're okay with my they're cool at my new job and you know i just did it and um for the longest time i had that like comb over haircut like take away the mullet take away the mullet think of a, a traditional comb over haircut kind of shorter on or maybe same similar length on the top shaven kind of a fade on the side i had that cut i found that cut and i was like that's my cut but nah i decided that i needed a change i still kind of have it and now that it's long enough i could put it up in a ponytail and so it kind of looks like i still have it but you took you take a look around i turn around and it's just flowing dude it's just a fucking sick mullet dude but it, again it was because of her i would have never have even considered i probably would still have that same haircut to be honest with you if it wasn't for her like she showed me she's like hey like i think you would look good in this <laughs> you know maybe you, you should try just, just try to mix it up a little bit and i say you know what fuck it and i did and i'm i'm really happy that i did and i specifically remember another thing kind of like i mentioned the nails uh painting my nails a little bit earlier but i specifically remember the one of the first moments she ever did that was when she said hey i think you would look cool in boots like boots like doc martens and I'm like, ah, I don't know, like I have considered it, but I just don't know. It's just one of those things where I don't I don't really know if, you know, I would be down to do that. I don't feel like, you know, I don't want to be make fun of or anything like that. And so one day we went to the mall, we stopped at a journeys and they had Doc Martens on special. And, she, and I was looking at him and I was like, kind of like, I don't know, skeptical a little bit. But she said, you know what, just get it. I'll buy them for you. I'll get them for you. Like, you don't have to use your own money. I'll get them for you. And so she got them for me, and I remember, I the like, even if it was hot as fuck outside, even if it was, like, <laughs> obviously I was doing walking or anything like that, I would still wear those fucking boots because I fucking loved how I looked in those boots. I still do. I haven't worn boots in a while because, you know, they're kind of, dog irons are fucking heavy, dude. I don't know what they're putting in those soles, those rubber soles, those gum soles, but they're, they're fucking heavy. So they're definitely not for like, if you're going out, maybe just to like eat, come back and that's it, you know, trying to look good for a quick little bit. But to be honest, I fucking love that. And again, it's just one of those things where she never judged me for wanting to paint my nails. She never judged me for wanting to dye my hair. If anything, she would dye my hair for me, right? She bleaches and dyes my fucking hair for me. Not this time. I actually went to the salon for the very first fucking time. Again, not one of those things that I... You know, never, I, not one of those things that I thought would not make me feel like a man or anything like that. Because honestly, another thing that I do want to mention is that I don't give a fuck nowadays about me trying to be a man, right? I'm so fucking sick and tired of that. Uh, to me, I just want to do what's going to make me happy and what's going to make me feel comfortable and make me feel, you know, alive, I guess, right? and happy at the end of the day that's what i care about is being happy i have these things in the background i have some action figures i have um you know pokemon stuff and you know squishmallows and whatnot of some of my favorite things and whatnot but that's because i want to i just want to be happy i don't give a fuck what anybody says about me and how, what i'm supposed to do holy shit i don't know if you guys could hear that but there's a fucking like fighter playing going off outside but anyways I, I legitimately do not give a fuck anymore of like what i'm supposed to be what i'm supposed to be is myself and if i have to express it a certain way if i want to express it in a certain way i will because that's just how it should be that's just how it should be it should it's not about a fake persona it's not about you know trying to live up to your parents standards which for the longest time that's what i was trying to do Right. I was trying to do certain things. I remember going to college and just fucking dreading it. 
like legitimately fucking dreading it. I hated, I hated high school. You know, I, I didn't really want anything to do with it, but obviously I had to finish it. And I just did not want to go to college because when I did, it made me anxious and made me feel like I was forced to do something. And, and I'm very much the type of person that if I feel forced to do something, I dread it and I hate it. I, I don't want to do it. And if I, especially if I don't like it, I just, I want nothing to do with it. And I'll let you know, right? That's probably where I'm a little bit of a pain in the ass, but I, I very much like my attitude is like, I just don't want to fucking be here essentially. Right. And the first class that I ever took was psychology. It, it felt good, right? Because the teacher was chill and it was a summer class. So it wasn't the length of a traditional class. So it was done pretty, pretty shortly after I started. But even after that, just the idea of having to drive to a community college, which is where I was at, and having to sit through a class, having to do partner projects with people I don't really, to be completely honest, you really give a fuck about or would ever associate with just sucks <laughs> it just fucking sucked and i give props to anybody that like actually forces themselves to be okay with it and just you know sit there and you know because you want a degree and i fully obviously i i if you, that's what you want to do that's completely fine there's nothing wrong with that there's really actually nothing wrong with that it's just from my from my own personal experience i know that it's not what i want to do and it's not for me and I don't regret it. Honestly, I don't regret it whatsoever because I'm still very much allowed to be employed. I think nowadays I found I found out, especially through my new job, that experience is very much valued more than a piece of paper that says you went to school. Right. And I very much am I'm the perfect example. Uh, recently, I got a new job um, a couple months ago. I got a new, I got a new job and and uh I was uh, doing a couple interviews. I was kind of nervous about it because I it was a remote job and I really want to work from home and I get to do that now and I'm very grateful for it. But I was told by the person that uh, had the final decision of hiring me that they were in between this other person, right? They were in between this other person who had the papers and had that fucking shit done. But I had the experience, right? I had the years of experience doing what it was that I'm getting hired for. And she decided that she wanted me over the other person. And uh, now, a couple months later, I, you know, I still obviously I, I talk with her and she says that that was probably one of the best decisions she's ever made because I'm, you know, she... I'm not not to toot my own horn, but I'm, I like to consider myself very helpful in that situation, in that environment. And so... I definitely think that I benefited from just sticking to my guns and honestly just doing what it was that was going to make me happy and make me feel comfortable at the end of the day. Obviously, in certain situations, that's not going to work for everybody. But to be completely honest with you, I think that's where a lot of places lean for is that experience, right? But I just wanted to give you guys a brief introduction of myself because I feel like that's important, right? When you're meeting someone, it's important to establish a connection and seem a little bit relatable, right? Because I'm going to be completely honest with you. I could be a little bit of an asshole, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I, I very much value my silence. I very much value my own personal headspace and my own personal time and my own just little bubble. Right. If I don't have to, if I'm in a in, in an Uber, you know, besides the initial small talk, I would much prefer for it to be just quiet. You know, if anything, I'm thinking, I hope this other person doesn't think it's it's awkward because I'm very much chill right now. But I really hope this other person doesn't think a certain way of me because I just don't want to talk. Right. And honestly, I like to consider myself a much better listener than I am a conversation starter or like someone I could I could hold a conversation. But in terms of starting it, I feel like I kind of suck at it. <laughs> I'm very much a, I, I prefer to listen, to be honest. And obviously, then I'll engage in the conversation. But a lot of the time, and I don't know if it's just me, but with certain people, I just don't give a fuck. I, and and I, don't, I don't really want to associate myself. And that's another thing that goes back to family, right? When you... And it doesn't always go for just a Hispanic household, but when you grow up in a Hispan with a Hispanic family, the Mexican family, you're very much like you. It's very much set in stone that when you go to like a family gathering or an event, 
you have to say hi to everybody. You have to have that small conversation, a small talk conversation with everybody. Say hi to your your aunts and uncles that you haven't seen for years. Say hi to your grand your god uh, godparents that you have literally not seen ever since the the uh, you got baptized. Like shit like that. Say hi to people that oh, say, oh, mijo, I haven't seen you. You, you. Do you remember me? And it's like, no, dude. The last time I fucking saw you was when I was coming out of the literal womb. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, I don't remember you. But I have to pretend like I do and be like, yeah, I, I think I remember you. Yeah, I remember that one moment that you're mentioning that I legitimately have no idea of. You know, you have to say hi to everybody, right? When I didn't really have to, I uh, really want to, to be honest. And that's one of the biggest things that I dreaded, right? Is that like conversation that I just do not give a fuck about, right? And even in, even in my teenage years, right? Being, I, I love being in my fucking room. I love being in my room. And I just love, you know, especially since I have a computer, I love just being on my computer and doing whatever the fuck it is, watching videos on YouTube or whatever, you know, being on Twitter and doing whatever the fuck. But even as a teenager, I just loved being in my room playing PlayStation or whatever. But I hated when company would come over because I would have to be, I, I knew at one point I was going to get hungry or at least thirsty. So if I go to the kitchen, I know that I'm going to have to see some person that I do have never seen in my life, or at least I think I've never seen in my life, but they have seen me in my life. And so now I have to be there and be and get the, uh, oh, you look bigger, you're taller. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what happens when you age. <laughs> that's kind of what fucking happens. You know, you kind of grow out of those things, you know, but it, I don't know, dude, I hated that shit. I really, really did. And I still really, really do. Like if I don't have to talk to somebody i just don't you know i i legitimately just don't and and if you are a very outgoing person and you just love starting conversations with somebody i commend you like i really really do like i give you mad props because i just can't <laughs> and half of the time i just don't want to to be completely honest with you but it's it's one of those things that you just kind of had to do you just had you just kind of fucking had to do otherwise you would you were you were stuck up or you were just rude and i hated it i really really did and again i kind of do it i kind of still hate it still to this day but i think i'm gonna leave it at that to be honest with you hopefully next time my goal just for just so that you guys know my goal with this is just to use this platform as a kind of like as a journal and i know that's kind of generic and i know that's kind of cheesy and kind of corny but again i don't really when it comes to writing, you know, a physical journal with a pencil or a pen, I don't feel like I do a good job at that. You know, I, I don't feel like I do a good job at that. I oftentimes find myself thinking of the very, very different things. And I think I will still probably do that, you know, on my phone, on my notes, I've just write down ideas or things that I for sure want to talk about just to reference. But I want to use this as an avenue for me to just kind of not only just express myself, but to log what I'm feeling. Right. And I think that's very important. And and I've been neglecting that a lot. Right. I, I always think of like, how do people keep journals? Like, how do how do people do this? And it's not like a crazy concept to think about or a, a crazy thing to execute, but to really, you know, in the moment, really express yourself, it could be very vulnerable. And, and it's a very fucking real moment. Even if you if it's just as simple as just writing something down right expressing how you feel I, it could be very difficult and i i like a lot of different shit right and this is not this this podcast or this whatever you want to call it is gonna be a way for me to just talk about shit right just talk about shit that i'm into i'm, I'm very much into very very different things i follow a tiktok account that covers niche drama and every other episode, she talks about just niche drama and very different communities, right? It's not focused on gaming. It's not focused on the celebrity dramas or the influencer dramas. It's like I saw one earlier that was something in woodworking <laughs> drama within the woodworking community. And it's like, what the fuck? Okay, like what they got cooking? What do they got going on in the woodworking community, you know? And there's just very different types of shit you know and besides of what you see me produce on you know youtube shorts and you know on other platforms i'm very gaming focused but 
hopefully this will allow me to just do whatever the fuck I want. And that's what I want to do at the end of the day. Just do whatever the fuck I want. And hopefully you guys vibe with that. You guys, hopefully you guys find that relatability. If that's even a word, that relatability of just shooting the shit and just having this on in the background or just something like that. Um, but as long as you know, you're there, that's all that matters. And I appreciate that a ton because I feel like not a lot of people allow themselves to do that, right? To just express themselves in a way or are, are not even allowed to, right? Express themselves in a way where they could just do and feel that sort of freedom um, to just be themselves. And hopefully this will give you maybe a little bit more of a motivation to just do that one thing that you've always been wanting to do, even if it's like the smallest thing. And for me, a lot of the time, it's just the small things, right? I'm not talking about going fucking skydiving or going to Japan or something like that. Just small things that you've been wanting to do for yourself that you either have not motivated yourself to do or haven't allowed yourself to do, like painting your nails, dyeing your hair, trying out a new hairstyle, just doing that type of shit, right? Because at the end of the day, I feel like even though those things might feel like small things, to different people, they're huge things they're enormous things and i want to just come through and shoot the shit so that's going to be it i really do appreciate it 40 minutes of your time and hopefully you've been here and you know if you enjoyed it i will try my best i don't know how the fuck spotify works but i'm going to try to put this on spotify so if you guys just prefer spotify over having like a visual i'm very much the person i'm doing this in a visual aspect and, you know, I'm still trying to figure out the background and whatnot. I know it looks a little bit whack right now. It's just my typical, like, recording thing. But I really hope... I, I'm very much the type of person that prefers a visual, even if it's just the conversation. There's no videos or anything like that playing. But, yeah, we'll see where this where this goes. And we'll see what I do with this, like, platform or this new little chapter or whatever. But I appreciate it. And I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as I hopefully will making it. But take care, guys. Stay safe. You guys are amazing. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Take things going into 2024. Take things one step at a fucking time. Don't overwhelm yourself with the long term. Take uh, appreciate the short the short term, short term. Appreciate the short term. Appreciate every day. And um, again, don't overwhelm yourself. You know, live day to day, and you you matter. Have yourselves a damn good one. Bye. <laughs> What the fuck?